don't know if there's anything that we left unresolved. Let's take a look at it. Then we'll look at the code. The game has the ability to, we can pick high, low, seven. We can put a bet in. And we can play. My balance is 99, so I lost. Play again. I could clear out my bet and my selection. Um, but I kind of like that it leaves it with what we last had. I think that's a nice feature. If I want to only bet one at a time, I could put the one in the first time. And if I wanted to bet sevens because I thought I could win with that, I, I would do that too. Um, so, you know, that is, um, you know, that's the behavior of this. Um, obviously, the layout of this isn't particularly good. Um, we'll play around with that. Um, maybe in the last part of this class, because there's something I want to talk about before that. Let's look at the code. Um, I think the only thing that uh, we really need to review is the code for the GUI, because we went over the other classes, I think, fairly well. And we wrote some fairly good test classes for them to test and to test to make sure that, you know, randomly that um, the, the right percentages came up, you know. And that's important to test if you're doing any sort of random operation to make sure that uh, you're getting things in the proportion that they should really appear, that you're not throwing sevens half the time, because you should only show, throw sevens one out of six times. All right? And you should show, uh, get lows or highs 15 out of 36 times, whatever that reduces to, five out of 12 times, I guess. All right. So... Um, let's look at the GUI. Um, other than formatting things, uh, we'll, we'll leave that till later, but formatting things, obviously, we could do better for this. Um, and let's look at uh, the code and make sure we understand it functionally as it is now. Then we'll talk about a couple other things. So, going into the GUI, We have all our imports. We know why we import things, right? We import things uh, because we want to point to the proper class, and we need to define where that class is. So um, we do that so we don't have to put the full name of the class in there. These things are known as packages up here, all right? And really, the action listener, sort of the full name of the class, is the package plus the name of the class. So action listener is actually Java AWT event action listener. That's sort of the, the name of the class. Um, we put that import in there, so in our code, we just need to say action listener. If we didn't do that, we could have everywhere we had action listener, we could have this. full name of it. But that gets to be a little tedious. So we import it so we don't have to type. That's really all importing does, is it points to that's a class we are talking about when we say action listener. Yeah. Um, not, not I can really think of. Uh, it's not like it like imports it, like brings it in. It might compile slightly quicker if you explicitly name the classes that you want to bring in, as opposed to just bring them all in. But it shouldn't affect like the running of the program or anything like that. Okay, I have these things declared up here. 
these are described as instance variables. There's one of these for each instance of this object. All right. In addition, they can be used throughout the object. All right. Throughout the class. So, for example, JLabel, which is what I'm using for the two dice. I put that on the panel, so I use it in the constructor, but I also use it in the action performed method. All right, I use those in the action performed method. So if you want to use something throughout the class, declare it as an instance variable. These should all be private. My bad for not making these other guys private, but these all should be private. All right, radio buttons. We talked about those before. We need to associate radio buttons with the radio button group. That's what ties them together and gets them to work as a unit. All right. Um, so in our case, we have a choice of a radio button for high, seven, and low. We can define those radio buttons, and we put those radio buttons individually on the page. But for them to behave like a unit, that is, when you select one, it deselects the others. They have to be part of a button group. So for radio buttons, you're going to have a radio button object for each individual button, and you're going to have a button group. You add the buttons to the button group, and you add the buttons to the panel. Now, it seems odd. You'd think that you could get away with just adding the button group to the panel, but you don't. You add the individual buttons. Don't blame me, I didn't write this. All right, I'm just telling you how it works. So that's what we're doing here. We add it to the button group and then we add them to the panel. The rest are stuff that we've done before, where we have uh, our buttons and labels and all those things that we add to our panel. Um, we have a balance that we set to 100. Notice that is declared outside of the action performed event. The reason for that is we don't want the balance recalculated each time or reinitialized each time. So if I move this here, if I move this in here, what would happen? Every time I click the button, it's going to create a new integer that I set to 100, and then I add that. So it will show me the results of the latest one, but it won't accumulate them. So if I won five in a row, it's not going to show 105. It's just going to show me 101. All right. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that if that wasn't clear. So I pick seven and bat and play. Oh, I don't bat. So I bat and play. I lost, and I'm down to 99. I play again. I win, and I'm up to 104. I won four, and I'm up to 104 from 99. Doesn't make sense. Why? Because I restarted the balance at 100 every time I click the button. I lose them back down to 99. Again, this is a matter of scope, and I think I implied this, but I don't know if I talked about this a lot, but where you declare a variable matters. If you want something to sort of stay there for the life of the object, you're going to declare it as an instance variable. If you want something that you can use throughout different methods inside an object, you will declare it as a instance variable. If you have something that only needs to be around, during the function, you can declare that inside the function. For example, this variable player bet. I don't need to keep the last bet associated with this function. I grab the bet from the text box. 
I pass it to the play function, I get the result, and then I add the result to the balance, and I redisplay the balance. I don't need that bet anymore once I have, uh, once I have uh, done uh, played the game, gotten a payoff, and do that. So I can declare these variables in here. Takes a little while uh, to get used to that thinking, but um, that could explain sometimes results that you that, that don't seem clear or apparent to you. The last thing I did that was different than any of the GUIs I did before is I actually added an image to a label. Um, with, uh, and the way I did it is you can add a image icon to a label. And that is a set icon property. And what I did here is I declared my two labels, one for each die. Once I get, once I play the game, I ask the game for the first dice value, the second dice value. I piece together the image name because what are the names of the dice? They are d1 through d6.png. Now, that's exactly what I do here. For dice 1, d1 plus the value of dice 1 plus dot .png. That second dice image is d plus the value of the second dice dot .png. So I have those two dice image names, dice 1 and dice 2 image name, and I create a new image icon and set the icon of the label to that. Effectively that shows the label on the page. And since it's a label icon, it shows that image. All right, these are the labels and these are the icons associated with them. All right, questions? About this, yes. Right here. I set the label equal to, I set the icon for the label. That puts an image inside of the label. And the name of the image is when I create the new image icon, I use the name of the image as the argument. So this is going to contain, if I rolled a 1, it would contain d1.png. So by creating a new image icon, that actually creates the image, and then I add that to the label by saying set icon. So that's what connects the two. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the way I'm doing it here uh, is implied that the images are in the same folder as the code is, which it is. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, well let's see. H refers to the high-low game object I created. Okay. I need to grab it, because notice what that does. The high-low game is the, the object that encapsulates everything about the game. All right? In other words, nothing in the UI even seems to know that it's a dice game, right? All I know is what functions I can call on that game object. So H, this high-low game object, has everything about the game in it. I pass it to the H play method, what the user picked, a 0, 1, or 2, for low, 7, or high. And I pass them what the bet was. And I get back the payoff. If the low radio button is selected, I pass a zero. If seven is selected, the radio button seven, I send a one. If high is selected, I send a two. I'll then call the method on the high low game object, which will take the choice that the user made, either a zero, one, or two, take the bet, make sure that it's valid, right? And if it, assuming it is valid, it will go and it will roll the two dice associated with the game. 
it will add up the values from them and it will see if I picked low and it's less than seven then I win otherwise I lose my bet if I picked one and one means the player picked seven then they get paid off four to one otherwise they lose their bet and finally if they picked high and the sum is greater than zero they get paid off otherwise they get that so this high low games has everything about playing the game in it all the logic about playing the game in it including it returns the value of the dice right because if we play the game we want to see the dice that we got we just don't want to hear we won or we lost we want to actually see what the role was so that's in a nutshell what H is H is the object that actually plays the game and we get from that object the name the value of the first dice the value of the second dice so we can display it on the GUI just like we got the payoff and we can add the payoff to the balance to get the new balance questions about this now the one thing that we had talked about is I want to make sure that I can only give one of three legal values for the user's choice right the user should only be allowed to pick high seven or low so low seven and high so those three choices and in this example the three choices are represented by um, integers zero means low one means high or I mean two means high and one means seven now my GUI has to know that all right I could do this a couple of different ways all right um, because I want to ensure that the GUI only gives the right values to this so what I did and remember that my class my high low class could get called by any number of different GUIs right someone else could write a game for a mobile device not a desktop Java game and use my same high low class all right could be on a web page that uses the high low class so that high low class could possibly be used on several different kinds of GUIs all right I obeyed the rules and I gave the, the that class what it needs a zero one or two how can I be sure that everyone else that develops classes that use this code will do that correctly well I can't in fact I don't even trust myself to do it correctly right because I could have a bad day or I could come back a week later and forget what it's supposed to be or whatever so therefore we want to build our class in the most ironclad way we can alright so one of the things that we did is we put an exception test in here if you go to play the game and the choice is not between zero and two it throws an exception also if the bet is less than one it throws an exception so that's how we chose to address this my GUI only allows them to pick one of these three buttons right and that corresponds to low seven or high but even though my GUI did that, my GUI did the validation and it made sure that you have to give one of those values, all right, I still have code to throw an exception just in case there's always could be a different GUI that's going to be using this program and it might not have the validation in there. Now I could do a couple of other things that would maybe make this a little bit better. One thing I could do is I could declare a constant because how do I remember what value that is zero one and two so what I'm gonna do to just this isn't gonna make it function any different but it's gonna make the coding a little bit cleaner a little bit easier to read and 
uh, a little less prone to error, is I'm going to make some constants. Okay? A constant is, is like a variable, except its value never changes. What's the advantage of using a constant? It's generally easier to remember a constant name than to remember a value. All right? A good example I give is the speed of light. If I was doing some kind of astronomy application, I might create a, a constant called speed of light. Then I don't have to remember what the value for the speed of light is. I can just give the name speed of light. And if I got it wrong, or if scientists made a new discovery about the speed of light or whatever, if I got a more precise reading of it, I could just change it in one place. And every place that used speed of light would benefit from that. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a constant. And I'm going to do something I didn't do before, and I told you absolutely not to do this, but I'm going to make it a public variable. I'm going to make it a public variable because it's a constant, and no one can change it. Right? Remember, that's why we don't make our variables normally public, because we don't want someone changing it without using a set method. This is going to be public and final, which means that you don't change it. You can't change it. And it's going to be static, which means that there's not a copy of these variables for every object. There's just one copy per class. So public, final, and public, static, final, int. I'm going to capitalize it. Low equals 0. Seven equals one and high equals two. Now, in my GUI, I don't need to know exactly what those values are. So if I even look here, that even seems cryptic. What does zero mean? I can instead say the name of the class, not the name of the object, because it's static. Uh, it's pretty well standard. And then here I can change it to say if our choice is n I could actually keep that code that way. But I could say if it's not equal to this and not equal to that, I'm going to leave it like this. I could then go and say if our choice is equal to low, if our choice equals 7, if our choice equals high, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit to throw two different exceptions. If it's not equal to low and our choice is not equal to seven, and our choice not equal to high. I'm going to throw an exception, bad choice. And 
and then I'm going to put another one that says if argbat less than or equal to zero. Throw new exception, bad bat. So notice in reading this, I declare those constants up here, but throughout the code, I'm referring to the constant name. And that generally makes it more straightforward to read the code. And functionally, it should work the same. Let me just verify that, make sure I didn't mess anything up. I have to move that line of code back. No. I did move it, but I don't think I can't balance them out equals zero. Let me verify that. Yeah, and okay, now it's working. All right. So that's one thing that you can do when you have, like, a list of things that it has to be. You can give constants for those things and do it that way. And then, again, if, if you want to build it foolproof, so even though I did that with the constants, and even though my game GUI uses those constants, so this, game, uh, this GUI is going to be sending the right values over. I can't trust that other people that might develop GUIs aren't going to mess it up. So I have my exception, that if they give something that's not one of those legal values, it throws an error. All right? So um, it's just a little twist on what we've done before by adding constants to it. just makes the code more readable. Now there's another thing that we can do if we prefer. And I have an example for that, and that is to create what's called an enumeration. All right? An enumeration is where we define, we almost define our own data type. All right? Where we enumerate or we define the legal values that something can have. Now, we can do a lot more than this, but we can definitely use it for purposes like this. And so what I did is I I took and revised one of our earlier pizza examples to use an enumeration instead. So, one of the early pizza examples. All right, so it compiles clean. Let's look at the pizza class. Notice something that's weird. When I compiled it, I have pizza dollar sign pizza size. Now, we saw that before, right, when we had an anonymous listener. We, had, we saw the dollar sign, and we saw two class files for a given Java. An enumeration is similar to a class, all right? Let's look at the example, and let's see how I use it. So, in my pizza class, I declare an enumeration called pizza size, and I give it 
the three choices, small, medium, and large. So that would be the three choices for this. If you remember before, I didn't have that in there. And I had the pizza size variable, the variable called size was a string. Here I don't want it to be a string. I want it to be of type pizza size. So remember I said an enumeration is similar to a class? You can use this, you can use an enumeration name as a type of a variable. So this variable size is of type enumeration, uh, of this enumeration type pizza size, which means that it can only have three values, small, medium, and large. I probably should. Generally, this is going to be public because it's also sort of a static. If you read documentation on what actually happens with an enumeration, it actually makes like a static uh, variables in, in class. You can actually do a lot more with enumerations. You can create constructors and, and functions and all that. But for now, yeah, and I, I, would, I would typically make it public. Because we're going to see my test class, I'm no longer giving the words small, medium, and large. I'm giving pizza size dot large, pizza size dot small, or whatever. So I want my other classes to be able to use this enumeration. So this is the three possible values that this can have, small, medium, and large. And I say that size has to be one of these values. It's of type pizza size, which is an enumeration, which means it has to be one of those values. So all my arguments is not returning, it's not taking a string, it's taking a pizza size. So my constructors and my set method and my get method it's returning a pizza size. No need to. Because there's no way that you can call this and give it something other than that. Uh, I will test that to be 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure, like, I'm going to try giving a null and we'll see if it happens. Maybe you would have to test for null. And then here, when I'm checking, I can say if size is equal to pizza size small. If size is equal to pizza size medium. If size is equal to pizza size large. Now, in my unit test code for this, notice when I create it, I use this dot notation to specify the specific value of the enumeration I want. In other words, I want the first argument is supposed to be a pizza size. So the pizza class has an enumeration called pizza size, and I want it to be the large value. So this is how I will now create a large pizza. I believe I could create its own file, the enumeration gives it its own file too, by the way. In which case I don't think I would have to use pizza, that pizza class. But since I embedded it inside the pizza class, I have to do that. I don't think so, no. No. Let, let me double. Well, again, if it, it would be the same sort of rules. If it was in the same package, you could just use it. If it was in a different package. Overriding rule, if it must be declared in a file of its own. I did it this way. I, I'm not sure I agree with that. Let me go ahead and create a, my own file for the enumeration.
I didn't want to do that. Then I just have to say pizza size because it's in its own thing. No, it'll change because I got rid of that declared in there, and I will no longer see that dollar sign in our class. And it tells me the size is large, has pepperoni false, cost is $10, crust is thick, size is medium, has pepperoni true, cost is that. If you output the enumeration, it gives you the name of the enumeration. If you want something different than that, you can actually override the two-string method in there. And you can. Again, it's like a constant, so it typically is given in all caps. All right. Now, uh, I said I would check to see if I could give a null in here. I don't know. Did I? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I could give it a null, so I would need still need to throw an exception, but it would be a simpler exception. I could say if my pizza class, I could say, yeah, I would actually, I would actually do just like I did before. I remember, I'm going to put all my validation in the set, and I want everyone to use the set. So I would say this set size, arg size. I could do the same thing for um, trust, by the way. In the interest of time, I didn't. But I could do the same thing for that. And I could say for this. If arg equals null, throw new exception must specify size. So I lied if I implied that you get rid of writing exceptions, but Again, um, we, it's a little bit simpler because we don't have to test the specific values. We just see if it's null. I have to say this guy throws exception. And I have to say the other two constructors throw exceptions, right? Because this gets the exception and throws it. This guy either has to handle it or throw it. So anyone that gets an exception either has to throw it or handle it. And that means my test code is going to have to be in a try catch block.
to test 35. One, one second. I got an extra one of these in. Java lang exception must specify size. So what was your question? Can I say equals null? Right. Yep. Or do you have to say dot equals null? No, I can say equals null. Okay. Because null is not a, it's asking if the pointer is null. If there, is there no value in the pointer? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Now, how could we improve this GUI? Let's get back to the other example. So this is how we can use um, enumerations to clean this up. We could also, in this example, have an enumeration for pizza crust. Do we need an enumeration for has pepperoni? Probably not. Why? Because a Boolean is probably good enough. Or is it? Are there any real pepperoni lovers in this class? Do you like pepperoni? Have you ever ordered a double pepperoni? Work with me here. <laughs> sure. Okay, so in that case, it would not be a Boolean because I need three options, right? I would need uh, yes, no, or double pepperoni. So I could have that for each topping. I could have a topping amount. Uh, um, uh, enumeration for double yes or no. I could if I wanted more than that. But if it was simply a binary situation that you didn't offer double pepperoni or whatever, then you just, a Boolean would be sufficient. Light pepperoni? There you go. Fair enough. Half pepperoni? Uh, which is different. Than, light pepperoni would be a little bit of pepperoni all over. Half would be all on one side. Double pepperoni? Oh, I'm on, on half. Wow. That's mind boggling. <laughs> but we could make what an enumeration. Yeah, what a time to be alive, exactly. But we could write an enumeration for it if we needed to. All right? So it could be yes, no, double, double on half, uh, light, light on half. Could be that. Uh, that's actually a great question. How, how do you handle? How do you handle half pizzas? How would you, how would you handle half pizzas if we wanted to do that? Define it by left and right side. Define it by left and right side. Yeah, a, 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 I'm thinking a pizza. It's a good question, and I'm going to not talk about what I was going to talk about because it was boring. What I was going to talk about is how can I make that bet side thing bigger or smaller? And you just Google that. It'll probably tell you somewhere. All right? I hope. But if I was doing this, if I was doing this, here's what I would do. If I was doing like a real full-blown Pizza Hut, I would have a toppings class. Right? They had stuff about a topping, all right? Information about a topping. I would have a pizza class. And I would have a pizza half class. No. Could you have methods in the topping? Could you have an attribute in the toppings class for left, right, and the whole pizza? I, I want to say, yeah, we can. We could have the topping. We could have that in the topping that would be yes, right, or all. Um, this is a great question. 
Right, sure. Sure. I still like... Trying to think of all this, and again, keep in mind you could do this multiple ways. So you could probably have that attribute in the toppings. Um, I, I'm think. Well, here's the way I would want to do it off the top of my head, because there's some attributes that are pizza wide, right? I can't buy a pizza that is half large and half small, right? I probably could not buy a pizza that the right half was thick and the left half was thin, right? Probably the on, only thing that I could vary are the toppings, all right, per side. And I would count cheese and tomato sauce, the, the sauce, as also a topping, all right? So what I would do is I, and, and again, to answer the question, no, because a pizza half is not a pizza. And a pizza is not a pizza half. A pizza is comprised of two pizza halves. All right? So I would have a pizza class that would have an attribute for crust, an attribute for size. And again, those probably would be enumerations. All right? I would then have pizza half one. Uh, that was a pizza half, pizza half, two, that is a pizza half. Each pizza half, and then I might have a flag that says, is the pizza a split pizza or not? Because our life becomes easy if it's the same on the right and left, right? This is the, this is the one thing that is, is, can be manning about software development. Uh, what percentage of the pizza that you order are half and half? Uh, uh, not too often, right? I mean, most of the time I order pizza, I'll get two pizzas, one with one topping, one with another, all right? But yet, your software has to be able to handle the most complicated case that you have, all right? So. You could, you could. Or you could split it into quarters. Uh, I had someone, uh, a friend of mine's mom once ordered a pizza with a quarter this, a quarter that, and I think they thought you're just, you're trolling us. So they put all the toppings on one quarter, and three quarters of the pizza was just cheese. So uh, I, I think they knew what she meant, but decided, well, if you're going to be difficult with you, we're going to be difficult, you know, right back. I would then have in my pizza half... an array list of toppings. Yeah. The price Yeah, interesting. We'll have to figure out how to do that. All right, but that's how I would basically structure it. Um Okay, uh, we will see you next week. Remember, next we actually only have three more classes left, believe it or not. We have a class next week on, on no, 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 I, I'm wrong. What day of the week it is, is it? It's Wednesday. Right, scratch that. We have four classes left. I was thinking it was Tuesday. Uh, if it was Tuesday, I should be in a different class, though, so now. So, uh, yeah, we have four classes left, two next week, two the following week. You, there will be one more assignment left, but it will be easy, I swear. <laughs> what about a final exam? <laughs> final exam, I will try to make easy, too, and I'll have more details in the weeks ahead. Well, yeah, that, it's, like the, it's like the dentist saying it's not going to hurt. Right, that means it's not going to hurt him. All right? When is finals The week? of December something or other, 5th or 4th or something like that. Essentially like the first week of December. Okay. Uh, that depends. It might be online as well.